Hello, my name is Joschka Kaufmann. I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Marine Institute based in Mayo. I am funded under the SFI and IRC pathway program. And today I'd like to shortly present my research program, which started a couple of months ago on the evolutionary dynamics of Atlantic salmon and the scope for adaptation to global change. So I think we can all agree we live in unprecedented times with, for example, um, temperature changes that are becoming dramatic. And this affects human population through climate change and overexploitation of natural resources, but this can also affect plant and natural populations. Now, the question is how can populations persist under global change? And to understand and protect the future of our resources, we need to understand how they can persist if at all. And natural populations can either acclimatize or shift their comfort zone, and there's plenty of evidence for that. But through selections, populations can also evolve. This means change genetically, and their burden of proof on this is quite high, as we can't rewind the past completely. Studying evolution in action is tricky, and requires fundamental answers linking traits, demography, stressors, and the genetic changes at the base of it all. So how to show this genetic adaptation to climate change? Well, it can be very complex and I only have five minutes, but in essence, you need to understand the interlink between the environment, the climate, for example, the characteristics of the individuals, in the natural populations, the fitness, which is the reproductive success of the individuals and how it's linked to particular characteristics, and finally the genotypes. And it's really difficult to have all this information in one natural population for a duration of time. But thankfully, in the west of Ireland, uh, the bushel system is a small uh, a system that has been monitored for decades um, for mostly fish populations. And it's the perfect place to explore the capacity to evolve to changing environment. It's facing the Atlantic. It's at the interface between freshwater and an oceanic system. And the Marine Institute research station there has collected a massive amount of data since the early 50s and before on the uh, characteristic of uh, the salmon, the Atlantic salmon population there. And I'm going to show some of those characteristics. So first, uh, evidence is a reduction in the size of the population going from a thousand or more to a few hundred fish. And this can affect dramatically um, genetic characteristics of the population through drifts, through random processes. Then there is phenotypic changes already seen in reduction of size and change in the shift of uh, the arrival of the fish from the ocean when the timing at which they come back from the sea. In the late 80s and early 90s, the natural population of Atlantic salmon in the Borishul was supplemented with sea ranched uh, population that originally came from the brochure, but this variation in captive breeding escapement is known to have affected the genetic makeup of the population as well as its productivity. Finally, the work that Phil McGinnity in a previous SFI award has, has done is built this pedigree since the 70s, the family trees of Atlantic salmon and the Borishul, and for the last 10 years, we can link uh, almost all the adult fish to their um, ancestors. And this might sound trivial, but it actually is allows to look for um, how selection on particular trait would have changed through time. In my project, I'll aim to identify loci and drivers of selection and and um, identify the genetic architecture of change using genome scans. I also aim to identify the specific drivers using a landscape genomics. I'm gonna look at traits such as size or timing at return, 
but also at growth using the fish scales that have been archived to look at the marine and freshwater growth and link the response to selection on those traits um, to climate in a quantitative genetic framework. Finally, using all this information, I aim to model of what would have happened if human influence wouldn't have been there using a climate attribution framework, but also project in the future with the different climate scenarios um, with work that we're doing as well at the Marine Institute at the moment. With that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my funding bodies, so SFI and IRT, as well as the collaborators and mentors on the project, the Marine Institute core staff and you for your attention. Thank you very much.